Bandits abduct traders on Kaduna Birnungwari Highway. Another tragedy in Niger as gunmen kill 34 people. Benway Tertiary Institutions embark on indefinite strike. And on the foreign scene, top Sri Lankan prison officials sentenced to death over the killing of 27 inmates. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Now the news in detail. Bandits have abducted an unspecified number of traders when they attacked their convoy along Kaduna Birnungwari Highway. Daily Trust reports that one trader is feared dead and the bandits blocked the highway close to Ungwariako Forest around 11 a.m. on Wednesday. Efforts to speak with the police spokesman and the state, ASP Jalinge Mohammed, failed as calls to his phone were not answered as at the time of filing this report. Meanwhile, gunmen on Wednesday attacked two communities in Niger state and killed 34 persons, abducting three special hunters. Reports say the Niger incident appeared to be a reprisal, as a few weeks ago some special hunters and local vigilantes killed scores of gunmen who were terrorizing the communities. According to reports, the gunmen launched the attack in Nakuna and Wurukuchi communities when the villagers were on their farms harvesting produce. According to Yahya Mota, who lost 10 members of his family to the attack, 20 other bodies were discovered in the bush, while all houses in Nakuna and with a population of about 200 were burnt down by the gunmen who invaded the community in search of vigilantes. Governors under the platform of the All Progressives Congress, APC, have paid a condolence visit to Zamfara State, where 58 people were killed in Ukuyum and Anka local government areas. Chairman of the Forum and Governor of Kebi State, Atiku Bagudu, said challenges of inclusion, increase in population, desertification and proliferation of light weapons are some of the factors responsible for the prevailing insecurity in the country. The report. The chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC Governors Forum, and his Katina State counterpart said they are in Zamfara State to condole with the government and people of the state over the attack on eight communities in Bukuyum and Anka local government areas of the state where at least 58 people were killed. Governor Tiku Baguru said in the last few years, the federal and state governments have been doing a lot to address the security challenges facing the country. He, however, stated that more resources, community mobilization, support of the people are needed to flush out the bandits. Representing our colleagues in the Progressive Governors Forum, Northwest Governors, Northern Governors and the Nigerian Governors Forum, I visiting, visited the Ampara State Government House to commiserate with our brother, Right Honorable uh, Bello Matawale. Executive Governor of Zampara and the people of Zampara State over the tragic incidents of the last few days that led to loss of innocent lives and to also show appreciation and commendation to what our brother has been doing about security in the state. Most recently he has been in Niger Republic where with the permission of President Muhammadu Buhari he sought assistance and cooperation uh, of uh, the Nigerian president. And all around the country, he has been doing a lot, both within the state and within the zone, in order to mobilize more effort towards eradicating banditry. And a lot of success has been recorded. Aminu Masari said, without peace, nobody can live in Zamfara State. Hence, the need for communities to support security agencies by providing credible intelligence so that they can collectively root out the criminal elements to restore peace and order. We should not use the name of God recklessly. We should use the name of Allah with firm belief and commitment in our minds that we mean what we say. But this leadership, I assure you, we are going to walk our talk. We will, take, we will reclaim our land. We will, inshallah. We will not allow this by this. 
Matawale said his administration will not rest on its oars until it brings an end to the attacks on communities and ensure peace returns to Zamfara State. This human spirit, the genuine commitment of our great party to put the people first in all its plans and the grassroots support are part of the reason for the successes of our great party. The visit of this nature will further improve to our people that the APC is indeed a people centered party. The incident that occurred at the Zamfara State Governor thanked the Progressive Governors Forum for identifying with the state government and its people. Chairman Senate Committee on Army Ali Ndume wants the theater commander of Operation Hadenkei to deal with Iswap fighters before the situation becomes a serious threat in the Northeast. The Senate Army Committee is on oversight visit to Maimalari Cantonment in Maiduguri. Ndume said the government will spend 17 trillion naira on security across the country, adding that the visit is to interface with the troops on challenges and the way forward in ending insurgency in Borno State. The strength of the ISWAP is also <coughs> manifesting and growing, especially in the south of Borno. Peace is priceless. We are spending 17 trillion this year. But I can say here again that in the period where we are faced with challenges in almost all the 36 states, do more so that under your leadership in this year 2022, it will be written in gold of history that you, Major General C.J. Mushan, just as I mentioned, Obasan Joe brought the civil war to end, you will be the one that will bring the insurgency in the Northeast to that end. And still on insecurity, one person has been discovered killed in the early hours of Tuesday in Rumi village in Chikun local government area of Kaduna state. Residents of the community told Trust TV that they woke up and saw an unidentified male corpse at Al Ali Road close to the police outpost in the area. The report. Bandits had abducted 10 persons after killing one in Bagi Villa in Chukun local government area of Kaduna state on Tuesday morning. Another tragedy occurred where residents of Romi discovered the unidentified corpse. Once we woke up this early morning, so when I heard the people making noise, I said, what is that? They say, somebody is, somebody, whether is drunk or dead. And then I said, let me come and see myself. So when we come out now, we find out that that is, is there. So there is nothing we can do. The next thing is just, stop. let us go to the station there and then invite the police so that they will help us so that one can catch us and then go and look for in daily bread. No blood stain, no bullet wound. Uh, um, not, we don't see, we didn't see, no, nothing like maybe somebody stabbing or whatever, struggle or fight or whatever. We didn't see anything. Timothy Peter, a member of the Red Cross Service Group in Kaduna State, says they are yet to ascertain the cause of the death. It's not an attack, we don't know of the attack. It's a cops. We need to identify the cops. But unfortunately, they could only allow me to get the picture of the cops and no information regarding what happened to the cops. So as I'm talking to you now, from my own point of view, I don't have a relative information to what happened to the cops. Paul Jetto, an elder in the community, calls on the government to beef up security in the areas to avoid further occurrences. I woke up this morning to identify, I mean to see an unidentified corpse just at the side of the car there. We try to see if people that comes around, maybe somebody could identify him, but to no avail.
The Niger Customs Service says its operatives have intercepted 3,620 rounds of ammunition in Kwara State. The ammunition, parked in 14 cartons, were intercepted at Bukuru, Buraten local government area of Kwara State, a border community between Nigeria and Benin Republic. The report. The Kwara area commander of the Nigerian Customs Service, Controller Husseini Ahmed, disclosed this while addressing a news conference in Ilori. He said that a car was searched at Bukuru based on intelligence report and found to contain the pump action cartridges suspected to have been smuggled into the country. The ammunition, he added, is worth 1,444,000 naira. Still on the seizure for the year, he said 2,971 bags of paboid rice were seized. On Revenue Drive, Controller Ahmed also disclosed that his command generated and remitted a total of 9.8 billion naira between January and December last year. I make bold to say that from January 2021 to December 2021, the command has generated and remitted the sum of 9,848,505,000 billion naira naira 48 kobo. Which surpass, which surpass the previous or 2020 revenue with two billion nine hundred and forty two million and ninety thousand forty seven Nara eighteen Kobo. Under my leadership at the Pioneer Custom Area Controller from July 20, 2019 to December 2021, which is barely 29 months now. The command has generated and remitted the sum of 19 billion 159 million 240,000 134,000 19 Kobo. This is 2 billion naira higher than the 2019 revenue. And in Kanu, commercial tricycle operators suspend their three day old strike. And now we are now being joined by our reporter in Kanu, Idris Jibril, for an update. Idris, what's the latest from Kanu? Well, uh, thank you, Ibrahim. And the latest here in Kanu, like you know, uh, for the past uh, four days, the Association of Tricycle Riders started uh, a strike over what they call operating permits, which the Kanu State Roads and Traffic Agency normally used to collect the renewal of the permits. Now, yesterday they called off the strike, and today, like you can see, they are back on the streets doing their business of a tricycle operation. But this suspension of the strike is only temporary because they said they are suspending it for one week because the government says they should come back and continue doing their businesses for a period of one week pending. That, that, that period of one week, the government will announce the new situation, either to reduce the renewal fees or they will either continue collecting the normal uh, price of the, of the fees that they are collecting. So the tricycle riders have agreed to come back on the streets to continue doing their businesses while waiting for the government to announce uh, the next line of action. So in other words, negotiation between the Association of Tricycle Riders and Kano State Government is ongoing to find a lasting solution to this kind of, uh, uh, of situation on ground. Mike, you tricycle seems to be the only means of transportation in Kano where millions of people are benefiting in traveling from one place to another within the metropolitan city of Kano. So as of today, they are back on the streets and they have continued doing their normal businesses. So there's still a possibility that the strike could resume after one week? Idris Jibril there giving us an update from, the, from Kano on the situation of tricycle riders suspending their strike. And in other news, the Academic Staff Union of Tertiary Institutions in Benue State has commenced an indefinite strike action. 
chairman and secretary of the union, which consists of colleges of education and polytechnics in the state, Chagwa Kurayamen and Dennis Eka in a statement issued to newsmen in Mokodi, explained that the strike is part of measures to press home their demands for the payment of benefits to their members. Kuraya men insisted that the state government should document their appeals and resolutions before the union could back down. Meanwhile, the State Supervising Commissioner for Education, Godwin Oyiwana, said the union is asked to suspend the strike to give room for further negotiations. The union is protesting, among others, the non-payment of six months, five months arrears of 2017 salaries, improper implementation of the contributory pension scheme, non-implementation of the new minimum wage and its consequential adjustment, which should have commenced in 2019. Meanwhile, a meeting between the state government and the union held on Wednesday ended in a deadlock. You're still watching Trust TV News Update. Coming up after the break. Story of Twins Water Vendors. This and more after the break. Stay with us. update. Let's take a look at some of our top stories. Bandits have abducted an unspecified number of traders when they attacked their convoy along Kaduna Birningwari Highway. And gunmen killed 34 people in Niger attack. And moving on to more news now. Nigeria has recorded on Wednesday 432 COVID infections in 14 states and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, with the number of cases dropping in the last four days. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, in its update for Wednesday, said within the past four days, the daily infection figure reported stood below 600 compared to the over 700 cases logged days earlier. The data shows that 644 recoveries, raising the country's total discharges to 220,839, while six persons died as a result of COVID complications, which puts the total infections to 249,586, with 3,092 deaths. Meanwhile, in another update, the World Health Organization says over 85% of the people in Africa are yet to receive a single dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, while Moderna says it anticipates releasing data from its COVID vaccine trial in children between the ages of two in March. The Students' Wing of the Coalition of Northern Groups has condemned plans by tertiary institutions in the northern part of the country to increase tuition fees as well as other levies. The national coordinator of the group, Jamilo Aliu, who raised the issues during a press conference in Abuja, said institutions such as Abubakar Tafa Balewa University, Bauchi, and Ahmad Bello University, Zaria, had increased their tuition by over 100%, while Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida University, Lapai, in Niger State, and some, other, some others recorded a 60% increase. The group, however, added that the hike will prevent millions of poor Nigerians access to education, thereby increasing the rate of criminality and other vices in the country. By reports from its state chapters of an attempt by the federal and the state governments to commercialize education to make it the exclusive preserve of treasury looters at the expense of children of millions of less privileged Nigerians. The CNG student wing hereby condemns in the strongest terms the hike in tuition fees as an untimely, immoral, unconscionable, height of insensitivity, and unacceptable attempt to deny the children of the poor 
access to affordable education, entrench class dichotomy and widen the gap between the rich and the poor. We find it ridiculous and sad that stakeholders, particularly the lawmakers, cannot summon the courage to speak or stand with the people that sacrifice so much to see them in office at this trying time to demand an immediate reversal in the hike. Such increase in a country in which most of the citizens were living below poverty line will have negative implications for human capital development. If the peace hike is not rebuilt downward, it might force many students to drop out of school and increase social biases as students might be compelled to survive by all means. We therefore urge the government at all levels to rebut the old P to enable students from poor and marginalized families to access tertiary education and break the chain of poverty. The practice of water vending in many Nigerian cities has taken numerous forms, which include the pushing of wheelbarrows to the use of jerry cans. In the story of a 50-year-old twins, set of twins, Hassan and Hussein, who have sold water in push carts in Guarimpa village for over 40 years. Zainabala caught up with them. My name is Hassan Muhammadu. I've spent over 20 years selling water in a push cart. I have seven children. My twin also has seven. My name is Husseini Muhammadu. If there is scarcity of water, we sell a cart containing 10 jerry cans for 1,000 naira. If there is no scarcity, we sell it for 500 naira. We go through a lot to get water. Residents of Port Harcourt, River State Capital, describe the state government's fight against illegal oil bunkering and suit in the state as a welcome development. The state has been confronting perennial suit emission owing to operatives of illegal refineries in the state. The report. The suit emission in Port Harcourt and its environs continues to be a major concern for residents who attribute the cause to illegal oil bunkering and gas flaring by multinational companies in the Niger Delta. Speaking in Port Harcourt, some residents say for the directive to yield the desired result, there is need for provision of alternative means of livelihood for those involved in the act, especially modular refineries. And I do not think the River State government is doing enough to tackle the issue of suit. If enough was being done, the governor would have released the report of the committee he set up on suit, which we've not seen the report here today. But if we see that report, which is a process of investigation, we'll get to know the sources of this suit. I know that artisanal crude oil refining site is being seen as the only source. It is not actually the only source, but because that report is not how we can really identify the percentage of pollution and black suit that the artisanal refining is contributing to this. So I think the governor has to do more beyond what he's currently doing to address the issue of suit in River State and especially to provide alternatives for youths who are involved in artisanal crude oil refining. If the state government said the local government should clamp down on bunkering activities, it is going to be a holistic matter. We are responsible men of the society who will be engaged to engage this bunkering. It can be a dialogue thing. But if you say you can get a youth boys that are not properly fed to go and start fighting bunkering, of course, these bunkers will take care of these boys and then this menace will continue. It will be recorded that in the past few months, Petron has been fighting this battle. We have been going from places to places, smoking out the operators of artisanal refinery, otherwise known as Bow Fire and River State. We are happy that the River State government has come all out through the directives of the governor, the local government chairman, to fight this fight. Residents suggest that the best way to curb illegal oil bunkering is employment generation calling on... And that wraps up Trust TV News Update for this hour. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for watching.